What's going on guys? Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. In this video, we're going to be going over how to fetch the users and display them in this sort of active now view and then ultimately be able to click on them to navigate to our chat from there as well. So let's go up to our active now folder and we need to uh, create a view model for this. So let's go ahead and just create a folder for our view models and one for our view and move this active now view up into that. And then what we're going to do is go to this view model folder and create a view model. So it's going to be called active now view model. And this is going to be a pretty simple implementation. So we're just going to say class is going to be an active now view model. It's going to be an observable object. And we're just going to have a published var for our users. And then we are going to have a private function for fetching our users. But if you guys remember, we can make this uh, async throws. We already have the ability to fetch all of those users from our uh, user service. So I can just go here and say uh, self.users equals user service dot fetch all users. And we actually just need to say try await. And then we're going to go here and in our initialization, just add a task that says try await fetch users. And that's literally all we need to do for our view model, guys. It, you can see how helpful it is to have these re, these sort of like uh, reusable service functions. So if we go to this guy, we remember that we were calling that same function here. Um, so we're just going to add that uh, for this active now view. Um, and something else you can do is we can um, specify like a limit because obviously if you have like a million users on the app, you don't want to load them all into this view right here, right? So um, what we can do is add like a limit to this uh, fetch users function um, so that we can only load a certain amount of users into this uh, scrollable list here. So what we're going to do, guys, is add an input parameter here, and it's just going to say limit, and it's going to be an optional integer, and we're going to give it a default value of nil. Um, just so we don't have to specify the limit every time. Obviously, if we want to just fetch all the users, we don't want to have a limit there. And we're going to adjust this query here to be able to implement this limit. So basically, I'm going to say uh, let query equal firestore constants dot users collection, right? And then we're going to say if let limit equals, or I think we can just say if let limit query dot limit to our limit. And then we're going to replace our snapshot with uh, uh, this line of code here with that query right there. And let me just uh, make that a little bit neater. I like to do this sometimes just to make the code a little bit more uh, in line. Um, and guys, if you go ahead and just hit command B to build your project, you should notice that that's all good. So basically we're saying, Hey, if the limits there, then limit it to that amount of users. And for those of you who've never used that before, basically what's going to happen is in Firestore, it's going to go to that user's collection and just limit it to, uh, 10, uh, like 10, whatever limit you specify, it'll grab that number of documents. So if there's a million users in this collection, um, it will just get the first 10 and you can start it and stop it anywhere. And obviously this isn't like a full active now feature guys like that is going to be implemented in the pro version of the course where you can actually have like a list of contacts and this list will display people that you care about. Um, this was more for like UI purposes and to give you guys an idea of how you would implement this, but this is actually a pretty complex feature. So in the pro version of the course, this will be actually functional where you'll be able to display users that you have in your contacts list that will be actually active at that time. And if they sign out of the app, they'll disappear from that list. Um, but here, we're just gonna load users with a particular limit on that database query. Because obviously, you don't wanna fetch all the users and then filter it down. That would be like a massive data fetch unnecessarily, so we can just limit it right off the bat. So back in our active now view model, we're gonna go here and say limit is 10. And then all we need to do is implement this view model inside of our active now view. So we're going to go here and create a state object of our view model equals active now view model. 
And then we are going to replace this zero to 10 with our view model dot users. And here we're gonna go and replace that mock user with an actual user. And here we would want to say user dot full name. However, uh, we are just gonna wanna add their first name. So let's go ahead and just see if this is working really quickly, guys. It's gonna look a little messy. We'll go over how to just get the user's first name back. So we noticed that like that's way too much spacing, um, but it is showing up and successfully fetching the users on our application, which is awesome. Uh, then we're gonna add the ability to click on them to take it over to our chat with that person. But uh, what we need to do is just grab their first name. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that really quickly. Um, let's go back to our user model. And here we're just gonna introduce a first name property. So we're gonna look at the full name and just try to grab their first name um, by using that full name. And Apple actually has like a built-in component to do this. So I'm just gonna paste this code in here, guys. So we're gonna create a computed property. It's gonna be called first name. They have this formatter called person name components formatter. And then we're gonna create this components and it has formatter dot person name component. So it'll basically take a person's name and divide it up into components. You can then look at their first name, their last name, their middle name, their surname, um, their prefix, blah, 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 right? We just pass in the full name because that's what we wanna build the person name components from. And then you're gonna say return components dot given name. And if for some reason it can't figure it out, which it always will be able to, we can just return their full name. So let's uh, now go back to our active now view and we can replace this with user dot first name. And actually let's make this font uh, footnote guys. And let's run that again and let's see how that looks. Um, so that looks way better, right? So this is actually looking really, really good now. Um, next up guys, we have to fix an issue. We are publishing from a background thread to the main thread. So we just need to go and add a main actor declaration or macro right there and that will solve that issue. Let's run this again, just to make sure that error goes away. And it looks like we're good. And now we have this awesome uh, sort of like mock active now view. It is displaying real users on the app, but there is no active now functionality. Like I said, that will be available in the pro course. So uh, next up guys, we have to introduce the navigation component here. So when I click on one of these guys, I'd like to be able to go over to my chat with that person. So um, this is a little bit tricky and I am really excited to show you guys how to do this because it dives deeper into the navigation, uh, what's it called, the navigation stack functionality and how this works. So let's go to our inbox view, okay? Um, so if you guys remember, we have a navigation destination for our user already, right? And it's taken us to the profile view. So let's see what happens if we go to this active now view and turn this into a navigation link with a value of a user. So let's see. Let's go ahead and cut everything in this VStack and let's create a navigation link uh, with a value and a label. So the value is gonna be our user and go ahead and paste that in there. And because this active now view is sort of contained in our inbox view, when we click on this, it should just go to that user's profile, right? But that's not what we want. That's a big no-no. So uh, what we have to do is set up some sort of functionality to take a user to a different place, even like when it's tapped from uh, like a certain place, right? So basically guys, the original like functionality you had was to tap on our current user's uh, profile image up here and take, to our, take us to our profile. Now we wanna introduce the ability to tap on a user from another place in the app, i.e. right here, and take it over to our chat. So let's go over how we're gonna do that. So I'm actually gonna create a new folder in my directory here, guys, and it's going to be called routing. And let's get that in the correct spot, QRS, there we go. And we're gonna just create a file here, and it's gonna be called route. And what we're gonna do is make this an enum, and it's gonna be hashable. And we're gonna say case profile, and it's gonna have a user as the associated value and case chat view with the user as the associated value. So basically the logic behind this 
is we're going to use this route enum to either route us to the profile for a particular user or a chat view for the particular user. So we just need to adjust our navigation links a little bit. So let's go back to our core folder and we're going to go to our active now view. And for the navigation link value, instead of just passing in a user, I'm going to say route dot chat view and then pass the user in as the associated value there. And then also in my inbox view down here where I had my navigation link, I'm going to say route dot profile view and pass that user in there. Um, I believe that is coming from this guy, right? Um, so let's see, I believe we are going to need to wrap that up in an if let. So let me just go ahead and cut this and say if let user equals user, or we can just say if let user. Right. Okay. So that's looking good. And now guys, uh, and we're going to replace this navigation destination for our user with a route. And we're going to look at our route in here. And then we're going to be able to do a switch statement through that route. So just go ahead and hit command X here and say switch route and then say case dot profile let user. Then we want to go to our profile and then case dot chat view let user. Then we want to go to our chat view and pass that user in. So let's go ahead and run this and see if that works. And then I'm going to do a bit of a deeper dive into that because I did go through that pretty quickly and it is a little bit complex. So now guys, if I click on Heath, you'll notice it goes over to my chat with Heath and that is absolutely amazing. And now if I click on my profile up here, my profile image, it still takes me over to my, uh, what's it called? Um, my profile, duh. <laughs> so then, you know, clicking on Wayne or Steve, Tony, everything is working perfectly guys. And we click on Tony from there, it's good. We click on Tony from there, it's good. So that's looking really, really good, right? Um, one thing I did forget to do is to filter out the currently logged in user there, guys. So let's go to our view model. And um, I think we did this somewhere already. So let's see, in our new message guy, use new message view model. Yeah, let's um, go ahead and copy and paste these two lines of code. Try await user service, users filter. Okay, cool. And let's paste that in there. And we want our limit here to be to 10. Yes, okay, so now this is good, right? So it's filtering out our currently logged in user. We obviously don't wanna see ourself up in that spot. Um, oh, we need the currently logged in user ID too. So let's say guard that current UID equal auth dot auth dot current user dot UID else return. And then we need to import Firebase. Cool. All right. So that should be good to go now. Now let me just do a quick breakdown of what we did for that routing guys. So back to the original problem, we can click on a user from two different places, right? We can click on one from here or here. And we want uh, the destination for when clicking on each one of those guys to be different, right? So when I click on this user type, I want it to go to my profile. When I click on this user type in the active now view, I want it to take me to my chat. So we introduced this routing component, right? And we are saying, hey, we can either go to a profile or a chat and each option is gonna have an associated value of a user. So we switched up our navigation a little bit. So in the active now view, instead of making the value a user, we make it this route dot chat view. So we're saying that, hey, when you click on one of these guys, I want it to go to the chat view and then it passes in the associated user as the associated value. And then we did the same thing in our inbox view when we went uh, down here with our navigation link set up, right? When we click on this guy, we want it to go to our profile and it's gonna look at the user that we have right here. So once again, it's important to understand what the problem was. The navigation destination can only look at like a single type. So when we were looking at just the user type, we can only take it to one place, right? 
but now we have this route that can go to different places and it has an associated value of a user. So when we wanna to go to the profile, we can look at the user that was tapped on, which in this case will be this guy up here. Then when we tack on the active now view, we set up the navigation to be the chat view type and pass in that user and that user represents whichever one of these guys we click on here, it will then take us to that chat view and populate the chat view with that particular user. And to wrap this video up, guys, I just want us to add some navigation titles to the app here. So here we should have like a chats title and then each user chat should also have the user's name up at the top there. So let's just go ahead and figure out how we're gonna do that before we wrap this video up. So let's go to our inbox view and just go ahead and paste these two lines of code or type these two lines of code out after your list, guys. Just say navigation title is chats and navigation bar title display mode is inline. And let's go ahead and just run our code really quickly and that'll just give you that navigation title up at the top. And we can see here that the scrolling is working very nicely and we get that nice navigation bar up there. And another thing we're gonna do is add the user's name up at the top here for the chat view. And there's also another update I wanna to make to the chat view as well. But on our VStack here, guys, just go ahead and say dot navigation title, user dot full name, dot navigation bar title display mode is dot inline. And that will solve that. And next up, guys, the last thing I want us to do is wrap this for each loop inside of something called a lazy VStack. So the reason for that is that if you load a bunch of messages in this chat, when you use a lazy VStack, it won't render all of those things on the screen right away, even though they're not in view. It will only render things on the screen as needed. So it makes your performance of your application much more efficient. And you know this will obviously uh, uh, show its benefits when you have a lot of messages in the chat. Um, ideally, you would wanna implement some sort of pagination here. So imagine if you had 10,000 messages with uh, a particular user on the application, you don't wanna load all 10,000 of those messages at once. You would wanna only load like, <clears throat> you know, maybe 50 at a time. And then as the user scrolls up, you load older messages and things like that. That's a common feature you see in chat apps that's uh, very, very important for optimization of performance. And that is going to be a feature that's available in the completed source code. So in the next video, guys, um, I'm just gonna go over all of the additional features that are available in the completed source code project and where you can buy it and all of that good stuff. For now, that is basically gonna wrap it up for this YouTube version of the course. Um, it definitely gives you guys a solid foundation for how to implement a chat feature in your applications or just how to build a chat app in general. There was a ton of awesome stuff that we learned how to do here. Uh, really cool UI techniques and a lot of uh, backend engineering that we went over how to implement and just overall how to structure a messaging app. So I think you guys got a lot of value out of this free content. If you want the upgraded version, it's gonna be available for sale on my website at stephancodes.com. Link will be in the description to this video. So thanks for watching so much, guys. I hope you enjoyed this app. In the next video, we're gonna go over the completed version of the app and all of the features that will be included there. So we'll see you there. Peace.